Praise the Lord and greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is a broadcast of Apostolic Holiness Church of Jesus Christ located in Houston, Texas. Elder James Eugene Manuel is the pastor and general overseer. Prepare your hearts to receive a word from God as Elder James Eugene Manuel. We're not here because of various reasons and amen plus <clears throat> the pandemic, but uh, yeah, so we're going to go into the word, amen. Uh, Y'all have your Bibles or, or your apps? Or, mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're going to use a Bible now. <clears throat> So one of the scriptures that we normally go over, amen, or that we uh, preach and teach, amen, is based on what the apostles of Jesus Christ, amen, were commanded to, amen, preach and teach, amen, regarding repentance and remission of sins in his name and being filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. So, so turn with me, everyone, amen, if you will, to Luke chapter 24. So the gospel according to Luke chapter 24, and we'll begin at verse 46. So whenever you get there, you say amen. Amen. All right, praise God. So Luke chapter 24, <clears throat> verse 46. Well, matter of fact, we'll just start at verse 45. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So that's what Jesus Christ did. He opened up the understanding of his disciples and apostles so they can understand the scriptures, you know, because you have a lot of people that's going forth with Bibles and they quote the scripture, but they don't understand what they're reading. They don't know the actual meaning of it. You know, understanding the English language is one thing, but when it comes to God, you got to have an understanding of the word. Otherwise, you know, one can be misleading people into hell, you know. Take the scriptures out of context and just justify this about everything. And we see that going on. You know, you have someone, they say, well, I for an eye, two for a two. So, you know, he, you know, he killed me. He tried to kill me, so I killed him, you know, you know, and all that, you know, justifying murder, you know. Amen. Because, you know, that was under the law of Moses, of course, you know, that was like a, a physical external covenant, you know, God dealt with sin physically back then. And when it comes to sin now, he deals with our heart, you know, amen. Because we think, for example, the sin of adultery, that was an automatic death sentence under the law of Moses. You know, it wasn't no, oh, well, we can just split up and all that. No, that basically the party, the, the, the spouse that was offended by the other spouse was made an automatic will. Amen. Because once they were caught, two or three witnesses, yeah, he was in, sister so-and-so was in bed with Brother John, and you know, they ain't, they ain't married. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the whole town came together and stoned him to death. That was it. Mm -hmm. Amen. But now in this new covenant of grace, amen, through faith in Jesus Christ, of course, he don't require that. He requires us to repent from the sin of adultery, amen, repent from the sin of fornication and all uncleanness, amen, to get it out of our heart, amen, for the Lord to deliver us. Amen. Because when you deliver, you don't go back to something that you deliver to. So that was one of the things that Jesus opened their understanding to. And verse 46, and he said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behoove Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Amen. So that was Jesus' mission. He came down here to suffer for us and die on the cross for our sins so his blood can Amen. Be the permanent atonement, amen, <clears throat> for the sins of mankind, amen, because only his blood was able to wash away sins compared to the law of Moses, where the blood of bulls and sheep and all that just made a temporary atonement, you know, or in other words, just a little quick temporary fix that they have to go back every year, amen, for the high priest to sacrifice for the people, amen. But, so, verse 47, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. So Jesus is telling them that repentance, and of course repentance is turning away from the sin. You know, not just saying, Lord, I'm sorry, and then you go back to it. You know, you, you got a lot of this going on today with this so-called modern gospel. Amen. And, you know, they got hundreds and thousands of people there, you know. 
and just get up and say, well, you know, just tell God you're sorry. God knows you can't help it. You just do the best you can. You know, and that's, you know, you see folks shacking up girlfriends and boyfriends. You see the homosexuals and the lesbians in those churches. Amen. Hugged up next together and all that. Amen. And the so-called preachers tell them it's all right. Amen. For them to keep on living that way, to have no change of heart, no change of mind. Amen. No change of lifestyle. So that's what repentance is about. It's about a change of heart. Amen. Allowing God to change our heart. Amen. Our mind, our way of thinking. Amen. For him to clean us up so we no longer take pleasure in those things as against his word. Get to the point where you don't even want to, amen, do those things. Amen. Because I used to be a sinner. Amen. I used to take pleasure in a whole lot of stuff before God delivered me. You know. I was in all kinds of mess, amen, drugs, alcohol, amen, fornication, and, and all that, amen, watching filthiness on the TV, amen, and all kinds of stuff until God delivered me, but I, 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 I desired to be delivered, so I desired to repent because I realized the consequences of not repenting from those sins, amen, there was no way I was going to be saved because God is holy, and he gave us all a free will and choice. So that's what we have to realize. We have that free will to choose whether we choose to do right or whether we choose to do wrong. It says in that repentance, so turning away from the practice of sin, not just saying I'm sorry and just keep going back to it. <clears throat> in that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. So Jesus was referring to his name, that it be preached in his name, in Jesus' name, among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So it started in Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. So now let's go into the book of Acts chapter 2. So we're about to see what the power on high amen, is what the Lord was talking about. Amen. So praise God. Amen. So Acts chapter 2, and beginning at verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. So they was weak. The, the first original disciples were waiting in Jerusalem like Jesus told them to. Amen. <clears throat> Before his resurrection. Of course, this was after he resurrected and went back to heaven where he came from. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appealed unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, or other languages, as the Spirit gave them utterance. So that is the evidence of one being filled with the Holy Ghost. They speak in other tongues. Amen. So, of course, we got these modern folks say, well, you can receive the Holy Ghost and you don't speak in tongues. You just, you know, bow your head and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me of my sins. I accept Christ as my Savior. Thank you for saving me, Lord. Amen. And they just go about living any old kind of way. No lifestyle change. No repentance. No, nothing. You know, just same old, same old. No speaking in tongues. Amen. Because when a person receives the Holy Ghost, they have to first repent of their sin. Because you're talking about receiving the Holy Spirit of God. And the house has to be cleaned out, like the word says, swept away and garnished. So, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, not all, not all these are not all these which speak Galileans. And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Greeks and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues or languages the wonderful works of God. 
And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What mean of this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. So some were saying, Hey, what, what's going on? And then, of course, the devil and some saying, Man, these, these folk are drunk. They got that new stuff. Mm -hmm. Let me try that new stuff too. No, see? Now, they weren't full of new wine. And Peter's going to clarify that. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. So back then, over 2,000 years ago, the average person didn't get drunk on the third hour of the day, which was 9 o'clock in the morning. Amen. Folks normally wait till nighttime, you know, after they got up all day work and everything, relax, and they get drunk in the night, not early in the morning. But of course, it's real bad now because we, we we getting close to the Lord's coming back. So, amen. So he said, "For these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, said God." I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke, the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon is of blood before that great and noble day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So it didn't say they shall be saved, whosoever call on the name of the Lord. And he didn't say they shall be instantly saved. They shall. That's like a future tense. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God have raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. For David speaking concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. And we can just skip down a few verses here. Amen. Because the prophet Peter was making a point. Amen. So let's go to, uh, let me see here. Well, verse 31. And so Peter says, he seeing this therefore speak, speaking of King David, prophesying, he seeing this before speak of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, because when a person dies a sinner, that's where sinners go. Sinners go to hell. And since Jesus Christ became sin for us, he went to hell in our place. So we don't have to go there as long as we, of course, put our trust and faith in him and keep his commandments. So he went to hell, and his soul wasn't left there, Neither did his flesh or his body did see corruption. Amen. He didn't rot when he was in the ground for three days and three nights. This Jesus have God raised up. Well, uh, we are all witnesses, therefore being by the right hand of God and exalted, and having received of the promise, having received of the Father, the promise of the Holy Ghost, he have shed forth this which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith, my, he saith himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Now, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. In verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, and they had some conviction. They said, men and brethren, what shall we do? In verse 38, Peter told them what they must do. Then Peter said unto them, repent. In other words, turn from the practice of your wicked ways and be baptized, every one of you, 
in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So being baptized in Jesus Christ's name, that's the only way a man or a woman will receive the forgiveness or remission of their sins. Because Jesus even said in Luke 24, 47, that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Amen. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So now let's turn into Colossians chapter 3, or the book of the epistle of Colossians chapter 3. And for those of you who are tuning in, that's in the New Testament. Amen. That's right after Philippians and right before 1 Thessalonians. Colossians chapter 3. That's in the New Testament, everybody. Amen. Because sometimes we're trying to get, get a book like Colossians kind of mixed up with first or second chronicles, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, so Colossians chapter 3, and we're going to read verse 17. And so Apostle Paul says, And whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So he didn't say he do it all in the titles of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost because Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, those are not names. Those are only titles. Amen. But he said do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So that's when it comes to water baptism, when it comes to praying, when it comes to, amen, praying for somebody, amen, that they be healed, that God deliver them. You have to do it in Jesus' name. So we know that, but when it comes to water baptism, people get hung up on that because they've been taught something that wasn't biblical. You know, that whole Trinitarian baptismal formula started in Rome, in the Roman Catholic Church, you know, that started, I believe, in the third century, you know, long after the true apostles and the true saints either died off or got scattered, you know. So basically, that's like a counterfeit church. And instead of them praying to God, what we see them doing, they praying to statues. That's idolatry. You read the that's that that was idolatry in the Old Testament, that's idolatry in the New Testament. And instead of them calling on the Lord God as their Holy Father, who they call that Holy Father? Some dude in a skirt that calls himself the Pope. They refer to him as Holy Father. So you know that's blasphemy. Because there's no natural man on this earth is holy that that's worthy of being called Holy Father, but Jesus Christ. Because he is God. That's why the Bible says, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he who have made us and not we ourselves. And even in one scripture, in John chapter uh, 12, verses 44 to 45, and we, we can turn there too. Amen. So that way you won't just take my word. So John chapter 12, or the gospel according to St. John chapter 12. So we, we do a little bit of, uh, I guess, teaching and preaching too, so a little bit of that before. So John chapter 12, beginning at verse 44, Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he always referring to the Father sent him. So now verse 45, he says, And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. So now Jesus said, You looking at me, you looking at the one that sent me. So he basically identified himself as being the Father. And then John chapter 10, verse 30, it says, Jesus said, I am my Father or one. He didn't say, I am my Father or two. He said, I am my Father or one. Because <clears throat> even the prophet Isaiah referred to Jesus Christ as being the whole uh, <clears throat> God with us, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. When he said, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son, he called that boy the everlasting father. So if Jesus is the everlasting father, if there's a, a second father, that would make him to be powerless. Or, you know, that means there's two fathers, mm -hmm. you know, if Jesus is the everlasting father. And we know that only God is our father. So, you know, God is not the author of that confusion. So that means that Jesus is God, but by him having all power, 
he manifested himself to become flesh and blood in order to save us from our sins because no other man was able to do it. That's why, amen, the Holy Ghost overshadowed the Virgin Mary. So his very own spirit overshadowed the Virgin Mary in order for us to conceive and wrap his spirit in flesh and blood in order to redeem us. So, but the whole three up there and the Godhead, that came from Roman Catholicism. And that along with a whole bunch of evil that they doing with the pedophile priests and, and lesbian nuns and pedophile monks and that stuff still going on today. And you know, because a lot of times they try to, you know, with the media, they'll like brush over it, you know, with with the reports and stuff like that. But uh, but yeah, but what they do instead of them bringing these pedophiles to justice, with these priests, they'll just shuffle them to a different country. Let's say it's a pedophile priest in the United States that molested a whole bunch of boys. Instead of causing him to be arrested, amen, and tried and sent to justice, or rather send him to the gallows, because that's really what they deserve. No, they, they, they shipped him to another country, to some country where they don't have no extradition with the United States, so legally they can't do nothing with them, you know. And they've been doing that for centuries. So you should know that there's something wrong with a religion like that. You know, because Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So you see the gates of hell prevailing against a so-called church or, or ministry or organization. But, you know, I'm not saying people are going to be perfect starting out. You know, yeah, that's a process. Perfection is a process. But but you're talking about all kind of wickedness like that going on. You should know that ain't no God. Amen. No, no. Having shortcomings is one thing, but that's something, no, no, amen. So, hallelujah, but somebody needs to hear that, amen, praise God, because we have all kind of people t tuning in live, amen, and then many of them are former Catholics, amen, and some of them probably are Catholics right now, you know, wondering, hey, man, is this religion, I mean, it's right, you know, with everything that's going on, well, I, you got the answer, it's not right, it's not of God, it's of the devil, amen, you need to come out from that, Amen. Devil is religion. Amen. And come into holiness. Amen. Because the Bible says, Be ye therefore holy, for I am holy, said the Lord. He didn't say be ye Catholic or be ye Baptist or, yeah. or be ye Presbyterian. Amen. He said, Be ye holy. Amen. So praise God. So we will, amen, stop right there. Amen. So uh, any questions or comments or anything you'd like to add? You got thousands of people listening and watching you, so uh, choose your words wisely. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, well, okay, that's understandable. You got stage fright. You know, I used to be that way too. Amen. Because this was something that I, you know, <clears throat> I guess you could say, uh, you know, the Lord just, you know, gave me this burden. Because it's, it's nothing that I was looking for. You know, I was always trying to find someone else that I could be under, you know. but. And for a while I was under a particular bishop, but uh, you know, I, I, over the years he just, you know, I don't want to go into that right now, but you know, the Lord, the Lord just told me to move on, you know, because some people, you know, you can't change them, you know, God has to change them, God has to deal with them. One thing, the best thing you should do is just pray for them, you know, and pray that the Lord, you know, touch their heart and, and bless them, you know, help them to repent. You know, and, and that's the thing, even after God saved us, we still have to have a mind of repentance, a mind to acknowledge whatever wrong we do. You know, Lord, I fell short. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Help me to get this right. You know, because that's what sanctification is about. You know, setting us apart, getting things out of our lives that even after God saved us, that we still have to let God work on us. Amen. You know, even for me. You know, I'm not exempt. I have to let God work on me. I have to, Lord, have to let the Lord, you know, I keep asking the Lord, Lord, show me my faults. You know, I want to be focusing on everybody else and not focusing on myself because the word is for the minister, for the preacher first. You know, yeah, you preach to the people, but that word, it starts with you. You know, because you can't be, you know, crooked and half-stepping and then, you know, trying to tell someone else to be right. Because what Jesus said about that, he said, thou hypocrite, first put remove the beam on the boat out of your eye, then you'll see clearly enough to pull the beam out your brother's eye. So we got to, you know, live right first. And then, you know, what we preach and teach and have power to, 
Amen. Convert others and bring them to the knowledge of the truth. Because other than that, you know, you're looking at being just like those false prophets. Many of them are homosexuals. Amen. Behind the pulpit. And some of them, you know, a few of them in the closet, but some of them coming out with it now. They being bold. Getting they side of my partner of abomination and, you know, taking photo ops and everything. Because that's what the world is all about. You know, the world is coming together. You know, whether they call themselves being a Christian or not. So we as the people of God, we need to come together too. Amen. And, and praise God because, amen, somebody's listening. Amen. Hallelujah. But I tell you, yeah, we need to come together. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because this world is getting worse and worse. You know, evil men and seducers, just like the word God says, are waxing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And we see what's going on in this country and even other parts of the world. It's getting worse, so we need to draw close to Jesus. You know, we want to be ready against that day. Amen. We want to make it out of here with our soul right with God. You know, because everything else ain't going to matter when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So we thank the Lord. Amen. And praise God. And for those of you who are watching, amen, you can, of course, uh, we are at 6330 East River Park Drive, Sugarland, Texas, 77479. Amen. Service is Sundays at 3 p.m. Amen. And our phone number is 832-360-5812. And so until our next broadcast, may the Lord bless you and keep you all in Jesus. For tuning in today's message. If you are in or near the Houston area, you are welcome to come and fellowship with us. You may call us at 832-360-5812. Our web address is ahcjc.com.